quick demonstration of how to use the uh, Docker machine to create a quick instance uh, within uh, the Amazon cloud and deploy a Spark Master and a Spark Worker uh, to that environment. So I've got a simple script here uh, that calls a, um, the Amazon uh, API to create an instance. Specify the size of the instance, the, in the instance uh, type. Uh, we're just going to use a, a Amazon Linux uh, to create a quick, quick demonstration of this. Just take a couple minutes to launch the instance. This is actually probably the part of the process that takes the longest. Okay, so this machine is now running. It's fully initialized. You can type docker machine env, uh, actually do an ls, and you can see uh, I've got this machine that I've just created called docker spark. Uh, there's a couple other instances running. Uh, one is actually in a virtual box VM that's running locally on this machine. Uh, we also have another instance called docker big that's already out in the cloud. But what I need to do, I need to tell my Docker client how to connect to this machine. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to do Docker uh, machine env, the name of the instance that you're looking to work with. And it'll give you uh, some commands to run uh, to set the proper shell arguments. And uh, they actually give you this nifty little thing. You can just copy and paste it right back into the shell. So now I'm ready to work with my machine. If I do Docker ps, uh, there's nothing uh, pre-installed on this machine. Uh, there's no containers currently running, no containers uh, stored, uh, they're archived. Uh, and I'm going to use what's called Docker Compose to start up a multiple container environment. I'm just going to tell it, start up, start as is a daemon, so uh, it'll run in the background. Uh, the Docker daemon that's out in the cloud is going to download the images from the Docker repository. Uh, so it's got to, an image to pull. Uh, it's actually the same image that's used for both the worker and the uh, master. However, we could uh, configure that. Uh, if we had some specific requirements for the workers, libraries, and things like that, we could add those to a local container. So now we're running a new Docker PS. I get um, the, uh, uh, I see that there's two processes running on that machine. We've got the master and the worker. Now, these the, the master is actually listing on port 8085, I believe. Uh, yeah, 8085 externally on the container is mapped to 8080 internally. Uh, we just need to find out what the IP address is of that machine. So we can do Docker machine uh, IP of Docker Spark. So you see it's 10.01.74. Let's go over to our browser, HTTP 10.0.1.74.85. And you see we've got a Spark running. we got a single worker ready to take a job. Uh, if I wanted to, let's say I needed to do a bigger job and I wanted some more uh, workers, uh, Docker Compose allows you to automatically scale. So I'm going to tell it scale worker. I'm going to let's say I want four workers. Starts up an additional three workers. I'll go back over to the browser here. I'll take a second, and they got three additional workers ready to take a job. At this point, I get you know submit one of the sample jobs of cal calculate pi or anything like that, but I'm not going to work. You know, I'm not going to go through that. But uh, I can also scale down if I no longer need those workers. See, it's stopping a couple of the workers, removing the associated containers, and now uh, the Spark Master is reporting that it's got one alive worker and three dead workers because it removed them. Uh, Hypothetically speaking, say I'm done with this uh, Spark. I no longer want uh, Spark to be running uh, on that EC2 instance. 
I could do a docker compose stop. This will just stop everything. Web page is not available. If we wanted to free up the disk space and anything else associated with that, we could do a uh, docker remove minus v. Docker ps minus a. Nothing, we're clean. Uh, if I no longer want that image so out hanging out in the cloud, I want to terminate it, no longer need it, I can do a Docker machine remove Docker Spark. And at this point, you logged into the EC2 console, uh, you'd see the uh, machine stopping that instance, and uh, eventually it'll show terminated status.